welcome to Thinking Out Loud. I'm Gloria Politis of LTC. I'm your host for today's show. And in the studio with me, I have David Turcott, who uh, is from the old neighborhood to begin <laughs> with, disclaimer, uh, and also works at UMass Lowell, which, which you know I do as well. Uh, and today he is going to be talking uh, about a program for people who have asthma which is a big problem, correct? Yes, yes. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, Massachusetts has some of the highest asthma rates in the United States. And then within Massachusetts, uh, Lowell has higher asthma rates than the rest of, Ma you know, the general uh, averages in Massachusetts. So this is a uh, project that's um, funded by the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, their um, asthma program. Mm -hmm. And this is very, um, novel, you know, new kind of um, intervention research uh, study that we're doing. It's called ROAD, which means reducing asthma, uh, reducing older adult asthma disparities. And this program is for patients who are part of Lowell Community Health Center. Lowell Community Health Center has a partner in the project with us. And if they are a patient of Lowell Community Health Center and they have asthma diagnosed by a physician, then they are eligible to participate in this program. And so there's a lot of benefits to them for participating. Just to give you kind of an overview on asthma, and it's very complicated. It's multifactorial, which means we just don't know a lot still about it. Um, we know of some things that can increase the risk of asthma. So exposure to dust mites, which are biological, but they like to get in uh, creatures mm -hmm. that are sub, you can't see them without a microscope, and um, they get into mattress and pillow covers mm -hmm. and drapes and mm -hmm. stuffed animals and things like that, um, and they prosper in warm, humid environments usually, um, but also, you know, they um, can lead to the development of asthma as well as cause an asthma attack and worsen an asthma condition. And then if children are exposed to environmental tobacco smoke at a young age, mm -hmm. that could lead to the development of asthma. There's also, um, you know, if folks who are, uh, you know, affected by social stress in, some, in, in various um, situations, that can increase the risk for onset of asthma. Usually certain communities have higher rates of asthma. The lower the income, the higher the asthma rates normally certain geographical areas because of old housing, because of outdoor pollution, because of income you know, levels, um, the asthma rates are generally higher within um, uh, Latino communities, especially the Puerto Rican community, the asthma rates are higher than the, the average in Massachusetts, the same thing in the um, black uh, community. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely disparities mm. in who has asthma and the percentages of people, but all income levels that exist. So it's, you know, okay. regardless of income, uh, you could still have asthma, but it's more likely if you lower income, to, you know, the rates and the numbers of people with asthma are going to be greater. And there might also be a genetic component yeah, as well. Yeah, there's a genetic so component. So like, we don't know exactly why the, it's the asthma rates are higher among the Puerto Rican community. We assume there's a uh, gen genetic component, um, but that, uh, you know, it has to do with you know, where they live, you mm -hmm. know, um, environmental exposures and things like yeah. that also. And uh, so it's, you know, it's a kind mm. of a complicated disease. So, right. you know, there's millions of people in the United States have it. We don't, you know, there's no cure for it. Mm. So the only thing you can really do is manage it. So you can manage it two ways. You can manage it medically. So that m means, you know, you may be prescribed, um, control medication it's called, where you should be taking it on a daily basis and it helps control your asthma so you can breathe and normally or better than if you were not taking it and minimizing the possibility of asthma attacks and then also rescue medication, which is the inhalers oh, that okay. you may have seen people use where basically, you know, they're having a serious pro mm -hmm. breathing problem, wheezing, you know, they're not getting um, sufficient air into their lungs and they may be on the verge of an asthma attack so the inhaler you know helps open up the inflamed uh, bronchial tube so you know reason people have problems breathing is that the bronchial tubes get inflamed 
And so the hole where the air enters, you know, gets smaller and mm -hmm. smaller, and it, it's just because it, uh, and as it gets smaller, it's harder to breathe, yeah, so the people so are struggling, in, yeah. trying <laughs> to get air um, into their system. So you can actually die from an asthma attack, and mm -hmm. people die every year because of asthma. Um, I was talking to someone from Lowell General, and they were contacted by MACOM, and they wanted someone to go speak to them because an employee had an asthma attack and died in the oh. workplace. Oh my uh, and you know, people just didn't know what to do. Mm. You know, mm. um, so it does happen. So what our project is trying to do then? This is very novel research. This kind of intervention research has never been, hasn't really been done uh, and published with older adults. The kind of the model is off of a program that the Massachusetts Department of Public Health was um, funding with children with asthma. They mm -hmm. called it READY. Uh -huh. And so we're trying to kind of duplicate the model that was used with the READY study, but with an older adult, 65 or above uh -huh. uh, population. Yeah. So from that perspective, you know, we try to do two things. We try to manage, help the patients manage their um, asthma, um, medically more effectively as well as manage the environmental triggers that could be worsening their asthma condition and leading to asthma attacks. So we call them asthma triggers. Uh -huh. okay. Things that can provoke an asthma attack mm -hmm. or worsen an asthma condition. Mm -hmm. So with, from the environmental perspective, there's many triggers out there. Mm -hmm. So exposure to cockroaches, you know, the, the, the urine, the droppings, the, uh, the, sh the shedding of the shells, uh, you know, the mice, same thing, mm -hmm. you know, allergens mm -hmm. from the shedding of skin, the urine, the, um, you know, the droppings of the mice, mold, mm -hmm. dampness mm -hmm. um, can trigger a worsen an asthma condition, exposure to chemicals, exposure to combustion gas from your know, stoves or other, other oh. kind of, uh, some, you know, a burn, a, a appliance that, you know, burns fuel mm. like natural gas or oil. Yeah. Um, also, you know, there's other allergens in the environment. It could be pet dander, yeah. pet hair. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, a lot of what we do is we provide a lot of education. With Low Community Health Center, we have three community health workers who go into the home. So a part of the program is they're gonna visit the person who's enrolled in the program five times over the course of a six month period. Um, the first time is to go in there and gather some basic information about their asthma condition and then to do an environmental assessment to try to identify things in their home that could be worsening their asthma condition, contributing to um, problems with management of their asthma. In addition to that, they will gather information about the medication that they're using how, you know, do they have an asthma plan? Do they understand how to follow it? Do they understand mm -hmm. how to, um, you know, really u use the medication that they have um, correctly? And so we're trying to, you know, improve the ability of the individual with asthma to manage their asthma medically, but then also eliminate triggers and allergens in the environment that could be worsening their asthma. So we provide a lot of free items. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of benefits uh, for someone that have asthma to be in this program. They, um, as part of the interventions, we're gonna provide them with things that will help them control allergens more efficiently. So clinging is very important. You know, removing allergens, removing dust, um, things like that. So we provide them with a vacuum cleaner that has a, a filter called the HEPA filter. Mm -hmm. And that allows them to remove smaller allergens more efficiently from the environment and we give them mattress and pillow encasers to protect them from dust mites who might get into their mattresses. If once you have your, your mattress and pillow encased, even if they're in there, they won't have contact with you, so they won't have negative consequences to the individual. We provide them with um, less toxic cleaning chemicals. I was just gonna ask, it's, that's, that's yeah. also a trigger, it can be, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> and we um, also uh, provide a lot of education about you know, control, the asthma triggers, controlling them, a big issue in Lowell, a city like Lowell, and a lot of other cities, is controlling pests. You know, and you know, <laughs> in some of our other projects with asthma, you know, at least 20% of the families we've worked with have either had a cockroach or a mouse problem, mice problem, or both. And so, controlling and eliminating pest problems mm -hmm. is very important. So, 
Often pests have attracted or have sustained because they may have access to food. So often, you know, you may go to bed at night, but the pests come out, and if there's dirty dishes or if there's a trash barrel with no cover, they mm -hmm. can get in and they feed and they come out every night, you know, and they feed and they, you know, and they um, populate <laughs> and mm -hmm. expand the, the population <laughs> usually. And they move from different parts of the building too. So if you're in a multifamily building in particular, it can be mm -hmm. challenging. Even if you do a good job in your apartment, they may come in, you know, from another apartment right. or, in, or right. a common area within the building or from the outside if there's holes, you know, right. where they can enter, which in older um, buildings like in a city like Lowell, there's a lot of uh, cracks mm -hmm. in holes where mice and um, cockroaches can enter. And the mouse doesn't take very much space to yeah, squeeze in it, either. Yeah, a <laughs> diameter of a pen, <laughs> a diameter of this pen, or a right. dime, a yeah. mouse can squeeze through. They don't have a hard skull like we do. Yeah. Or if, if you have cats, <laughs> which I used to, yes. and they were real mou mousers, especially yes. one of them, uh, she would come yeah. in through the cat door with a live one. Yes, like yeah, <laughs> that happened once with my cat. <laughs> but, you know, some asthmatics, though, uh, it can, exposure to cats can worsen their asthma yeah. condition. Yeah. So part of the education is we recommend that if, you ha if they have a pet, they don't let it sleep on their bed. Because uh. uh, the nighttime is where often where individuals have problems breathing. And, and keep them out of your bedroom in particular. Try to keep them off the furniture, you know, where you sit. Um, <laughs> and uh, limit their, you know, their access to certain areas um, within the apartment. But not everyone have asthma will, you know, be triggered uh, by, by, a, a, by cat yeah. exposure. Right. So, but some are. Um, so that's a key aspect of mm -hmm. it. And you know, we might provide them things that could, you know, help maintain the cleanliness of the room. So if they have a hard floor, we, you know, we provide mops and buckets too, as with the mm -hmm. alternative cleaners. And, uh, and we try to de-emphasize pesticide use because there's negatives to pesticide exposure. Mm -hmm. So we practice something called um, integrated pest management, and we encourage that, which de-emphasizes the pesticides, only using them in target ways, um, no spraying pesticides around because that's not that effective, and it you know it increases the exposure to people. So what's so the most effective? The most effective is to seal all the entry points so there's no way they can be getting in. Eliminate the food and water sources. And mm -hmm. if you still have a problem and you can't eliminate it, then use targeted pesticides, use baits and traps oh. that you can put in certain areas um, and and they'll take them back to their nest and then it ends up uh, killing larger amounts mm -hmm. where spraying usually just drives them somewhere else and then they come back at another time in the future. Mm. Uh, so this, it's more effective you know, using an integrated pest management or IPM strategy as it's known. The other aspect of this, in addition to getting the visit from the community health workers, and we have community health workers who speak English and Spanish Khmer in Spanish, the language of the Cambodian community, and then we have um, an individual who speaks Swahili in English. Uh -huh. So several of the African newer right. immigrant communities mm -hmm. speak Swahili uh, because of that was the common language spoken in their country. Mm. You know, Kenyans, Somalians, mm -hmm. you right, know, right. as a couple of examples. So we don't have any Burmese yet. Uh, we? we have Burmese within this community, right. but we don't have the capabilities. That's what I meant. I'm, I'm yeah. somebody who speaks it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, to to um, to work with that population, these are larger populations. So, so we're working targeting kind of the larger populations that we are able to work with. Now, do, do they come from um, the Lowell Community Health Center? Yeah. So to get enrolled in this program, you have to be a patient of Lowell Community Health Center. Uh, so you have to be a Lowell resident. No, no, you no, have to be okay. a Lowell resident because. Um, it's many patients from Low Community Health Center live in the surrounding towns ah, okay. also. I would say the majority are from Low, but right. there are okay. also patients from Dracut, Tingsboro, mm -hmm. Tuxbury, Chelmsford. Yeah. So they have a large regional reach. Similar to Low General, they kind of cover the same ah. re region. But again, because they're in the city, you know, they, most of their patients do come from the city. Right. And uh, so if you were not a patient of Low Community Health Center and you have asthma, then you could you know, become a member, a member or a patient of Lowell Community Health Center. And once you are formally enrolled as a patient, then you would be eligible to um, benefit by the road project, and which would include, you know, the visits and the education, the items to control the asthma for free. And the other thing I didn't mention is 
um, because m medical um, management is very important in making sure people understand the prescriptions and they're using them correctly and there's a way of monitoring that. Two of the five visits that happen over the six month period include the community health worker and a visiting nurse. Uh -huh. So the visiting nurse really works with the individual around the, the, the medication and, and how to use it and to make sure that they mm. understand everything. If they don't have a formal asthma plan, getting one developed, which mm -hmm. is very important. So Circle Home would be involved in that way. Correct, right. correct. So it's a great program and we're fortunate because, um, you know, this was a competitive uh, process with Mass Department of Public Health. They put out a, a notice saying they were looking for researchers and clinical partners to, s to apply to be the site. Mm. We're the only site in Massachusetts that ah, is actually doing this research. Some earlier research, yes. had pilot. Correct. Yeah. No, yeah. So, oh, this is the only yeah, one. So we and, and by the way, uh, Dave is a research professor. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've done other asthma research. I mean, you know, you had to meet certain qualifications to even apply to be considered um, for this pro to get funding for this project. So one of them was you had to be an asthma researcher, um, which I qualified to be because right. I've had other projects doing this kind of asthma intervention research. Um, not with this specific model, but a similar model. We didn't, you know, the asthma research that I've done in the past, we've mainly focused on the environmental, yeah. you know, um, aspects. I mean, we do, did gather data and information about chemicals, but we didn't have, not chemicals, but um, medication use. Yeah. But we didn't have a visiting nurse involved, mm. so we weren't able to provide that level of support and, you know, around the uh, medical management of the asthma condition. Um, so this is also an important and unique project because we're really integrating the in-home intervention with the clinical mm -hmm. um, um, care. So the physicians, are com you know, is, uh, who treat the individual with asthma, communicate with the visiting nurse, and the visiting nurse goes out a couple of, uh, two times, you know, out of the five visits. So we have a, a very good integration now between, you know, the clinical right. care that the providers uh, are giving yes, to so the asthma, indivi asthmatic individual and the in-home intervention. So it's a comprehensive, yes, really, Yes, it's approach. a very comprehensive yeah. model aimed at, again, prevention and management because, you know, f the average cost for someone who has to go to a hospital and be hospitalized mm -hmm for um, an asthma attack that requires hospitalization, it's five to six thousand dollars minimum, <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know? Mm. Um, is right. And so and to go to the emergency room for care, if someone's having an asthma attack, it doesn't, you know, eventually result in hospitalization, it's gonna be at least a thousand dollars. And then mm. visiting your doctor costs, you know, hundred plus, yeah. and then the medication. So <coughs> by doing these interventions, if we're able to improve the health of the, of the asthmatic individuals and we reduce the number of hospital visits, you know, ER, emergency room visits, visits to their doctors, medication use, that saves a lot of money in the healthcare mm -hmm. system, right? right? As well as for the individual. Right. So that's kind of the, you know, the focus of what we're doing. And, and the focus, again, is um, older. So one of the questions we have on the little flyer here is, are you 65 years of age or older? Right, so I suppose we qualify that. Okay. That doesn't mean you have to be 65 today. Our plan is over the next six months, we're going to enroll you know, all the individuals who are going to participate in this program. And then, as I mentioned, we, over a six-month period, we visit the home and pro you know, provide them with these free items that help in education and help them control the environmental triggers as well as the, how they manage their, their asthma medically. And then six months after the last visit, we do a follow-up phone call ah. and get some additional information. So we, that's kind of, and then we evaluate, you know, the information we have and compare it to the health information it, it, that they had and gave us originally, and we're hoping we'll see improvements. Redu reductions in you know visits to the doctor, emergency room, things like that, medication use potentially, as well as we have certain quality of life indicators that we look at, and we're hoping to see improvements in those. So we've been involved in a couple of projects with children where we sh had significant improvements just by doing interventions in the home. We reduced visits to the emergency room by 80%. Wow. Among the population within over a one year period, we reduced um, hospitalization, we reduced visits to the doctor's office by 70%. 
um, reduced asthma attack numbers, wheezing mm -hmm. problems um, by around 70%. We also had five what we call quality of life indicators that we showed um, significant improvements on, the physical health of the um, individual with asthma, the child, the um, social activity level because it affects their ability to you know, participate in socially, True. their emotional health, it affects emotional health if you have asthma, <coughs> and, but also the family, the social activity level and the emotional health of the family. All of those improved significantly mm. after the one year period as well as um, we saw reductions in medication use. So, so everything you know, across the board, yeah, you know, showed those, those are hu major huge, improvements. Yeah, huge, huge numbers. While you're doing that, I'll just uh, ask, ask you, um, we did a PSA yes. for that project, yes, so yes. Well, we're going to do a PSA for because <laughs> <laughs> I played a doctor in that one. Yes, <laughs> you did a very good job. <laughs> Thank you. Even though I didn't get the script ahead of time, <laughs> but uh, uh, which is why we really love having LTC here to <laughs> get the word out to the community. Yes. So, so this hasn't really started? No, it yet. has started. We've oh, already has, enrolled okay. about 40 individuals. Oh, all right. So our goal is to enroll about, you know, at least 100. So, you know, so the clock is ticking, unfortunately, because this isn't a ongoing project ah. forever. Okay. You have to really get enrolled over the next, by the end, uh, uh, April 30th of next year. Oh, that's a little time. Yes. Early time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but you know, but as soon as we enroll our, our number, then we'll have to stop enrollment because you know we have a certain budget and we can only provide so many items uh -huh. to so many individuals. We can only visit so many individuals. So if anyone is listening and you have mm -hmm. asthma, and you have and you are a patient of Low Community Health Center, you should definitely um, contact one of our community health workers there, and I can give you the phone number, or you can read it, or if you can put it up on your screen, you know, that would can be great. It. Let's see about reading and it. And <laughs> if you're not a, a patient of Lowell Community Health Center and you have asthma, you can, uh, you know, contact them about getting, um, you know, having an intake um, interview and becoming a patient mm -hmm. of, of the, of the health center, and once you're a patient, then you would be eligible to participate in this program and to benefit by it. But w getting back to the age, I did want to clarify that, mm. you know, so our plan is then to finish collecting all the information and working with the individuals by the end of April 2018. So as long as you turn 80, 65 before April 30th, 2018, you're eligible to enroll. So even if you're only you know, 63 now, but you're gonna be 65 before April 30th of 2018, you can participate. Ah, okay, so it's that end, yes, end deadline yes, that, the end that you have to date be of the project. All right, well that, that's good information <laughs> to have. Uh, let me take, uh, since you want me to read it. Well, I can read it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got three names and three phone numbers here, uh, which we will put up in, at the credits or scroll it or whatever uh, mm -hmm. our editor decides to do to get that information uh, on the TV set. Uh, for more information, contact Carla Caraballo. Yes. That number is 978-322-8500. Uh, the and next Ka one Kawa is speaks English and Spanish. In, okay, English and Spanish. And Lorna Kiblagat? Is yes. It? Okay. And she is at 978-322-8926. And she speaks English and Swahili. Okay. <laughs> and then China Sath, who I assume is the one who speaks Khmer. Yes. <laughs> as well as English. 978-322-8927. So... The first six numbers, 978-322, and then each one has their individual, uh, I assume, extension. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we will put that up for yeah, you. So I yeah, so I encourage you, anyone listening, you know, that uh, is going to be 65 over the next uh, year and a half, um, or is 65 now, because if you have asthma, you know, this is, I mean, you're getting all these things for free, you're getting additional, um, you know, you're getting people going into your home and doing an assessment for free to identify anything in the home that could worsen your asthma condition. You're getting free items like vacuum cleaners to um, help you control the triggers mm -hmm. more effectively. And um, you're getting additional medical care that's free. <laughs> you know, this doesn't get charged to your medical provider. You don't have to pay any deductibles. This is all nice. paid for through mm. the grant. 
Um, so it's, it, you know, it, if you definitely want to take advantage of this, because mm -hmm. as I mentioned, it's not going to be a, a program that is always there. You right. know, at least in the short term, you know, mm -hmm. it, eventually in the future, once we're able to show, hopefully, that it pays to fund these kind right. of in-home interventions and integrate the home intervention with clinical um, care, that maybe in the future, you know, insurance companies would reimburse because they're going to save mm -hmm. money in the future mm -hmm. by spending a little for prevention up front. But we don't know when that will happen or if it will happen. <laughs> if so, it will happen, right. But right. so it's an opportunity that people should take advantage of. Mm. Uh, it's a limited opportunity, uh, but they can benefit a lot from it. I should also mention one other thing. You know, we do provide also a gift card at the end. Oh. Yeah, that people, you know, for a local um, supermarket. Mm. And, uh, a little bonus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because, again, you know, we are, you know, it's, you know, we have to schedule a time to go visit uh, people at, con at their convenience. So we just want to, you know, show our appreciation for uh, them participating with us and working mm -hmm. with us on this and being willing to be, you know, to, p to take advantage of this opportunity. Right. And it is 65 years or older. Correct. So if you're past, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, older, older. <laughs> Don't have to worry yeah, about Yeah, and that. again, you know, if you go on, you're going to be 65 by April 30th of 2000. And um, 18, and if you're 64, 63, you can, you know, you're eligible to participate also. Right. And is that, you know, the the cutoff um, in terms of the ending? The yeah, program, that's the six when it months? will be in. Okay, yeah. so yeah, so if, yeah. All right. Um, so <laughs> good to know. <laughs> so the date to enroll by is um, April 30th of next year, 2017. 2017. Okay, and then it ends. Right, um, April 30th of 2018. Okay, so any last words for our <laughs> audience? Or <laughs> I mean, uh, do you really expect that you're going to have as dramatic results? Yeah, as because you did um, for one the thing other? I didn't mention is we also have received, we've three years ago we received some funding from the United States um, Agency Housing and Urban Development to work with older adults also. And, but we don't have the visiting nurse as part of uh -huh. that project, so we're mostly focusing on the environmental uh, interventions. And our preliminary data, we're in the process now of fi finalizing our data analysis, but our preliminary data that we looked at um, several months ago was showing significant improvements in some key areas, but Fantastic. not every area, you right. know, a, a, that so we So you know what to right. work on and so look we're at, hoping so. Well, we may see significant improvements in all of our indicators, but because we only had, we weren't analyzing right. everyone it was in, it was just a, 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 a segment right. of the, um, all so the individuals. So we didn't have all, you know, so when everyone, all the data is in a, analyzed we, for all the participants, we may show significant right. improvements everywhere. So we're going to have to wrap it up now. Okay. And thank you so much. Good okay. information. Well, thank you uh, for and inviting And thank you for tuning in to Thinking Out Loud, and uh, see you next time.